A.R. Shaw, journalist and author of Trap History, the Atlanta culture and the impact of trap music. A.R., thank you so much for being with us here this afternoon. Quite a shocking surprise, of course, but for those who don't know Rich Homie Kwan and the impact that he's had on the music scene globally, can you sort of speak to that a bit and just get people caught up on what his life and legacy? Yeah, definitely. So Rich Homie Kwan, he came into prominence uh, in Atlanta around 2012, 2013. And he came he came in prominence at a time when Atlanta was kind of going through a transition from uh, the outcast, T.I., Jeezy, Gucci Man era. And it was a new uh, group of artists that was coming up where there was uh, Rich Homie Kwan, Young Thug, Future. He was a part of this group that was really taking Atlanta's music scene to that next level. And uh, we just saw his rise as an independent artist, 2012, 2013. And he became, you know, a global sensation. And so someone like Rich Homie Kwan, his loss is there is definitely impactful to the Atlanta industry. We've seen Rich Homie Kwan. His music, of course, was huge, like you said, in the Atlanta music scene, but also globally. He was marking and making his way up the Billboard charts in the early 2000s and the mid 2000s as well. He also was able to be nominated for an iHeart Media Award, BET Awards as well. The impact, again, that he had on the music industry, he sort of changed the way him and Young Thug, the way that music sounds. Can you sort of speak to that and what that kind of meant to other artists all across the country? Yeah, so Rich Homie Kwan, he he came uh, into prominence again at a time when Atlanta was going through a transition from a, uh, from a musical standpoint. And him, Young Thug, Future, they all had this melodic type of uh, flow that they would use. And it was different from what, what was pretty much uh, presented earlier in Atlanta music, where you know, we had the crunk era, you had early forms of trap music, where Rich Homie Kwan was more melodic. He he was someone who, uh, you know, he wasn't a singer, but his his songs were very rhythmic. And you could you can kind of, you know, hear the melodies in his music. And so he was someone who kind of ushered in a new sound uh, in Atlanta hip hop and pretty much hip hop uh, nationwide from a global standpoint, because as we all know, the sounds from Atlanta pretty much influenced the world. And so Rich Homie Kwan was one of the individuals who helped to influence uh, not just the Atlanta sound, but hip hop overall. Absolutely. And we're seeing rest in peace posts flowing from all over the country, other artists who respected him. And it's just going to be a tough hit for those in the music industry. And of course, anybody who enjoys the type of music that he made and played. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you have, you have to understand is that uh, a lot of people grew up on his music and, uh, you know, there's a whole generation uh, that are adults now, uh, millennials, uh, who who grew up on Rich Homie Kwan and, and some Gen Zers who grew up listening to his music and, and, and um, you know, for, to, to see someone pass uh, again, uh, you know, we, some of the reports are saying that it was an overdose. Uh, but, you know, to see, you know, another person, a young person, uh, past is going to definitely just, you know, have another, it's, it's another sore eye, another black eye for the hip hop community. Absolutely. And like you're just mentioning another one, this isn't an uncommon occurrence, unfortunately, in hip hop. We've seen several artists pass in the last few years, whether it's due to gun violence or drug overdose doses, which there's no current cause of death out there right now. But just thinking about that how do you think that people are going to react to continuing to see young artists who are inspiring them pass away at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, it's something that needs to be addressed. I mean, we're seeing uh, young individuals pass. Just a few days ago, uh, Fat Man Scoop, who was a who was a major artist uh, in, in, in the industry, he passed. And we see, we're seeing that a lot of artists are passing at a young age due to either poor health, violence, or a drug overdose. And so it's something that as a community in hip hop, it needs to be addressed. You know, why are young artists dying so young? And so I think, you know, we, we have to talk about mental health. We have to talk about uh, the access to health care. Uh, you know, what's being done to really um, ensure that these artists, and not just the artists, but the people who follow the artists, that, if, that, the, that there's some type of standard in terms of checking for your mental health, checking for just your health, your overall, how are you feeling on a day-to-day -day basis? And so hopefully this is a wake-up call to just this generation about, you know, s s what's important to, to our lives because, you know, we don't need another artist or anyone uh, of that age to pass before their time. Absolutely. AR, thank you so much for joining us and just giving a little bit of insight into the life and legacy of Rich Homie Kwan.